All right, welcome my Z stars to my newest video for AP Statistics. Before I begin, I want to give a quick shout out to the students watching at Lodi High School in New Jersey. What is up? All right, so this video is all on symbols. This video is vital to moving forward in reference to statistical inference. So hopefully you've already learned about sampling distributions. Hopefully you've already learned about confidence intervals. And in those two units, there are tons and tons of symbols. And the biggest problem is a lot of kids mess those symbols up and they use the wrong symbols at the wrong time. So this video is to kind of clear all that up before we move on to testing a claim in a significance test. So first off, when I'm talking about symbols, I'm talking about the symbols that we find in three different types of distributions. First, we have a population distribution, and that is the, the distribution for the entire population of all people that I'm talking about or all objects or animals I'm talking about. Then we have a sample distribution, and this is the distribution for, an, for a sample of a set amount of people or a set amount of objects for just one sample. And then we also have what's called a sampling distribution. And a sampling distribution is repre representing many, many, many sample statistics, right? So we got a population distribution, what a population looks like, shape, center, spread. We got an individual sample, what that sample looks like, shape, center, and spread. And then we got a sampling distribution. Now, a lot of kids understand what a population looks like. A lot of kids understand what one sample looks like. But we really got to make sure you understand a sampling distribution represents all different values of a particular statistic. And we look at either means or proportions. So we're not talking about a single sample mean or a single sample proportion. We're talking about looking at all of them. All right, so it's really important that when we talk about all this stuff, you understand the symbols. So let's focus on proportions first. All right, a population distribution. Well, to be honest, a population distribution for a proportion is pretty boring. It is one number and one number only, and that is P, the true proportion of a population. So if I was trying to figure out what percentage of teenagers wear seatbelts, if I was able to get to every single teenager in the world, P would be the proportion of them that wear seatbelts. Now, this number has no standard deviation attached to it because it is the one and only true value for the entire population. It doesn't deviate. Let's just say we find out that 89% of teenagers wear seatbelts in the entire world. Well, it's 89%. It's not gonna deviate, right? It's not gonna go up or go down. It is 89%. All right, a sample distribution. A single sample will produce what we call a P hat. This is the proportion of one single sample. So if I look at say 100 teenagers that I randomly select and maybe 80 of them are wearing their seatbelts, that would be 80%, 0.8. That is one sample proportion. And again, this number has no standard deviation with it either because it doesn't deviate, right? It, my sample of 100 kids had 80 that wear a seatbelt. If I go to bed, wake up tomorrow, and look at that same sample, it's still going to have 80 kids that wear a seatbelt. It's not going to change. But now we're going to talk about a sampling distribution. In a sampling distribution, uh, it does change because a sampling distribution is representing all possible p-hats from all possible samples of a particular size. So we're talking about many, many p-hats of a particular size. And earlier I mentioned size 100, but again, it could change based on whatever your sample size is. So now here we say, okay, well, boy, that's a lot of p-hats. I wonder what the mean of all those p-hats would be. Like if I were to take the average of all those p-hats, add them all together, divide by however many, there are many, many, many thousands of them, what would I expect to get? Well, I would expect to get the true p, the true proportion. If I knew without a shadow of a doubt that 89% of teenagers wear their seatbelt, yes, looking at many, many samples, there's going to be variation there, right? Some samples might be higher, some samples might be lower, but the average of all those samples will be 0.89, 89%. Now this, in a sampling distribution, you will have some deviation because you're not talking about a single sample, you're talking about many, many, many sample proportions, and yes, some are going to be higher, and yes, some are going to be a little lower, so there is a standard deviation for all of these many, many, many p hats, and the formula for that is the square root of p times 1 minus p, all divided by my sample size. So you see how the sample size does affect 
the spread of a sampling distribution. Bigger samples will vary less because bigger samples are going to be more accurate to that truth. So again, a lot of symbols on the screen right now. Make sure you understand all of them, all right? This is super, super important. Now, the one more thing that can happen is sometimes at a conference interval, you're trying to understand what many, many samples will look like, but the only sample you have is yours. If the only sample you have is p hat, meaning you do not knew, you do not know the true proportion, well, then we have to use what's called standard error. And I call standard error the twin brother of standard deviation because it is the same formula. It's a giant square root. But if we don't know the true P, all we know is our sample P hat, then we are going to have to use that P hat in place. Whoop. Sorry, I slid down the screen a little bit there. We're going to have to use that sample in place of our P. And that's where we get the name standard error. Now, standard error is used only in confidence intervals because in a confidence interval, you don't know what the true proportion is. You're trying to find it based on a sample. So lots of symbols here, but hopefully you understand all of them. All right, now let's talk about means. All right, when you're talking about means, there's a lot of things that change here. First off, what is the mean of an entire population? What is the mean weight of every deer in the world? Well, that would be the true mu, right? But in that distribution, in that population of many, many, many deer, well, each deer is going to have its own weight, right? One single deer is going to deviate. So there is some standard deviation within a population. And we call that sigma. That is the standard deviation of the population. So again, you know, maybe we were able to actually measure every single deer in the entire world and the average weight is 300 pounds. But again, every individual deer within that population is going to vary a little bit and that's where we have a standard deviation that comes along with it. Now, when you're talking about one particular sample, well, then we get X bar. That is the mean of our one single sample. So maybe we only look at 30 deer and the average weight of only those 30 deer would be our sample mean. And within our sample, we're also going to have some deviation. Not every deer in our sample is going to be exactly the same. I mean, I guess they could be, but chances are they would not. So our sample is going to have a standard deviation that we just call S. All right. Now we move on to a sampling distribution. Remember, a sampling distribution doesn't look at just one X bar or one statistic. It looks at many, many, many X bars, all taken from a given sample size. So one thing we say here is, okay, you know, what would the mean of all those means be, right? Many, many, many means, right? You know, one sample might come back at 310 pounds. Another sample might come back at 309 pounds. Another sample might come back at 297 pounds. But the mean of all those different means should be, well, the truth. So if we know that the fact is 300 pounds is the average weight of all deer, well, then we'd expect the mean of all those samples to be 300. But again, samples are also going to deviate. Some samples might be higher than 300. Some samples might be lower than 300. So there is a standard deviation here as well. And to calculate the standard deviation for our sampling distribution, we take sigma and we divide it by the square root of our sample size. And again, now this takes into account sample size because sometimes your sample is bigger and bigger samples are going to vary less. So, you know, if I look at 500 deer versus 30 deer, the sample of 500 deer is going to vary less than a sample of 30 deer on average. All right, now the only other thing that could happen, as we've seen this before, is sometimes when you're trying to find a um, true mean, like I have no idea what the true mean weight of an elk is, so I, the only thing I'm going to use is my sample. So if you don't know the true standard deviation, then we have to use, again, same thing happened with proportions, we call it standard error. Standard error is the twin brother standard deviation, but if you do not know the population standard deviation sigma, then you have to use your sample standard deviation in place of it. So it's the same formula, just replacing sigma with S. Now this is what tells us that we have to use the T model. Remember, the T model is a very different model, similar to the normal model in a lot of ways, but it is flatter and more spread out. But the T model is used because of this idea that we have to use a sample standard deviation in place of a population standard deviation. So again, 
lots of symbols in this video and I, I truly hope that you do understand all of them because the one thing I find with my students is that they misuse all these symbols in the wrong place and that could cost you a lot of points on the AP test. So understanding proper symbols and when some samples are used in terms of what are you referencing? Are you referencing a population, a sample, or are you referencing sampling distribution? What symbols you use to reference or to refer to numbers is super, super important. So hopefully this video will help you because all these symbols are going to be used in our next units and we need to make sure we focus on them. All right, guys, see you in the next video. Cannot wait.